people say when you ask, why is that your scripture? Because I like that scripture. Yeah. I like what it says. But most of us don't go prior to that around verse 9, 10, 11, 12, before we get to 13, where the Apostle Paul talks to the church about, I'm not speaking in respect of lack of my need. He didn't say he didn't have one. I'm just not talking from my need. He says, here's why I don't talk from my need. Because I have learned. What have you learned, Paul? I have learned that whatsoever state, whatsoever state, I mean, there would be content. First of all, then he goes on to show the different state. He says, I've learned how to abound and to abase. I've learned to have and not have. I'm paraphrasing here. I've learned to have and not have. He says, I've learned to be content even if I don't have. The thing about us, you can tell when we got and when we don't got. I know it ain't correct English, but y'all get me out there tonight. You can tell when we have something because we shout and celebrate. You can tell we don't have because we in that church and the pastor got to call you to see where you at. I'm saying that from this premise and this perspective. But when he talked about I have learned what sort of state that I am be content. I developed the quality. Then he goes on to say, I can do all things. What things? Discover the ability to live at wherever I am in life and not be influenced, not be affected, not be bothered, not be excited, not be overwhelmed, not be overcome. I'm not, not too caught up in the air. I've learned. I'm not too high. I'm not too low. How do I, I've learned to be, uh, how to, I, I can do all things through Christ. Christ enabled me, afforded me this ability, this gift, this skill set that I now possess to be able to, to be able to content in all places, at all places, at all times. I developed it through walking with Christ. Right. Well, how did I get it? He, the word learn means by use and practice. Yeah. That means over and over again, I've experienced being hungry, being full. I've experienced being high, being low, over and over again, that now it has developed in me that quality. Well, we skip that process. Yes. The Bible says in the fifth chapter of the book of Hebrews concerning Jesus, it says, though he was a son, yet learned he obedience. Well, how did he get it? By the things that he suffered, what he went through, what he had to do, endure, because he can only be qualified by enduring the process, and we skip those processes. We don't like them process because nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to hurt. Nobody wants to have pain. We don't want to experience it. And if I can avoid it, I'm going to get out of it. That's why we, we'll leave church. We'll leave people. We'll leave friends. We'll leave loved ones. We'll leave husband. We'll leave wife because I ain't dealing with it. I'm not going to deal because now we have a new message. I don't have to deal with all the negative things in my life. Now we call them negative and we run from them. God got you on the job with somebody, and you said, I'm tired of that negative person. Well, God's trying to develop in you the ability and the skill that you have with that person. Yeah. <laughs> I quit. Awesome. You're in the zone. Oh, wow. That, that was so good. You know, you're really right when you talk about the learn, uh, that word learn, and what it means, you know, by use or by practice. And something this morning, or yesterday morning, um, I was asleep. I was asleep. I, I had prayer prayer. We pray around five, at five. And so I fell back asleep. And, and normally, you know, during the pandemic, I'm like, okay, well, you know, we'll be here a minute. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, in my sleep said, get up, and I'm not going to tell you again. Mm. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of thinking to myself, wow, what is this? And he, he said, I, what, and I knew you when he said, I'm not going to say this to you again for me to get up had something for me to do, and so I had to get up. I jumped up like that, I shot out of a can. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was thinking about that later. I'm like, I mean, I could have done that. Okay, I'm just kind of thinking to myself, you know, me, me and him just kind of had a conversation. And I realized something, and as you were talking, uh, Pastor Carlos, um, about the learned, about the ear of the learned. And that's something that we get to process and practice. By the things that we go through, they give us an ear to hear what the shepherd is saying, the good shepherd. Because the word of the Lord tells us that in the last days, there's going to arise many false prophets, false apostles, false Christ even. And all of these people are, are going to have something to say. And what does it talk about? Having itching ears. And so the ear of the learned is that through all the things that we've gone through, 
so what has happened now is that we really don't want to hear God. My sheep know my voice. Why? Because of all the experiences that they've had with the shepherd. And some of them, most of them, was where he was getting everything that related to the world out of us. But we, you know, it's, it's like we run from the process because we make the process the thing that we curse. It's an anathema to us. We want what we consider to be the rewards of the process, but we don't want the process. Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. And the God of all grace, after you have suffered a while, he will perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. That's why we can't settle nowhere. Because we have not allowed what God has chosen to perfect us. And in this season, this time, we can't run anymore. We're going to have to face these challenges because otherwise we won't need to be here. And I'm not preaching a fear and escape message. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) This is a message of preparation. We have to prepare. Because of the, you know, what he's given us. Go ye therefore into the world and preach the gospel. We still have the same commission and mission. And so there are things that we have to do before the rapture. It's not just for us to stand gazing up at the sky and, you know, you know, okay, we're ready to go right now. Right now, come and get us. No. It's not going to be like that. And I do know that the, the spirit of the Antichrist is in the world even now. Even if the man had been revealed. But what I'm saying is that we've got to prepare for what God wants to manifest through the church in this hour. And the only way that we can do that is that we talked about unity. And we talked about, you know, um, obedience to the word of God. Because we, we got to quit running sooner or later. we got to face whatever it is that we have to face. And we can't... Um, Blame everybody else for the things that we have come short in. Because the Holy Spirit is in us, and he's bringing us into a place in him so that he can get what he sent us here to do. I say yes and amen. You know, in line with that, and I know that, I know suffering is one of those curse words that I've you know, and, and when I say curse, I'm not talking in the sense of profane. I'm speaking from the standpoint of feeling like something is taboo. It make, That's something you don't make you be profane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> but here's the thing. In, in Romans 8, chapter, just for a moment, uh, Apostle, let me get you real quick. One of the things that we want to do, because here's, here's, here's what life is about in terms of what heaven has purpose. Think about it for a moment. Being who we are in Genesis, in the book of Bereshit, in the book of uh, beginnings, in Genesis, the Bible said, God said, let us make man. He had something on his mind, something in his heart. God had a specified design purpose for reason he made the man. And when Jesus, think about it for a moment. We talk about the things that uh, the scripture says in, in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and because of the thing that he suffered. In other words, as a son, though he were a son. In other words, like we look at sports and sometimes now we got playoffs going on now. You know, some seed, you know, because you were number one seed, you got to play uh, number eight seed. Uh, you get a chance, in other words, sometimes, and in football, if you if you are at the top of, of your game, top of your league, um, or, or your league, you get a chance to not play that first week. They call it the first round by. Well, Jesus was the son of God, the best of his kind. He was the prototype of everything that was going to come after him. And yet, for though he were a son, he didn't get a first round back. He didn't get to play the low seed. When he had to go on Luke 4, said when he was led by the Spirit, he didn't go up there to meet up with some demons. The Bible said he was led to the wilderness, and there was the devil. He had to meet Satan. He had to meet encounter him. He didn't get his weakest imp. He didn't get his lowest challenge. He had to meet. And the same thing with Paul, 2 Corinthians 12, 
One says, though he said, I remember, he said, I know a man about 14 years ago was in the body out of body. I can't tell. He said, but this man came to visions and revelations. And he said, he said, but he said, I went to paradise. He said, I went to paradise in the third heavens. And he said, he saw things that was unlawful for a man to utter. He said, but as a result of those visions and revelations that was given unto me, uh, that was given this messenger, notice where this messenger came from. It was not just an imp, it was a messenger from Satan. So you can see as believers that 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said, there's no temptation taking you but such that is common to man. And God is faithful. Yes. To the degree you're going to be assaulted, you got challenges, you got crisis, you got hardship, you got it to the degree that God has graced you. Yes. Our fight is going to be commensurate to what he's deposited. That's why when Paul said, man, I saw the Lord three times, this thing may go away from me. He said, no, my grace is sufficient. In other words, I pack your backpack before I sent you to school. I get everything you're going to need is already in it. So whatever you, you and I are up against, whatever we're going through, listen, you're murmuring and complaining. All you're doing is pushing back your supplies. You're pushing back what God gave you to help you with. That means you're ignoring it, you're negating it, and you're not using what he gave you. Because remember, the fight is going to be commensurate with your deposit. Whatever God has put in your life, that's what he gave you to go through. And so listen, you got to understand, what we go through, our crisis, our hardship, and our difficulties, those are our, those are our stands. The Bible says, you're the light of the world. But the light, but the Bible says, being the light, every lamp needs a stand. And so your stand for you to use your light is what you go through. When you get a challenge, you get a hardship, you get a crisis, you get a difficulty, that's your stand to put your light on. Without it, because otherwise it's going to be under the bed and under a bush. Those are your opportunity for you to shine. Because remember, darkness afford us, darkness, darkness afford us to be able to reveal our light. Listen, Jesus in Gethsemane. And the Bible says that Lord, if the, as he said, listen, please let this cup pass. Can you let this cup pass? And in that dialogue, in that exchange, he said, listen, if this cup is not going to pass, except I drink it, he says, What? Thy will be done. So he settled the issue that the cup is the will. Yes. Are you hearing yes. me? What you're going through? We call it suffering. The will of God. The purpose of God. What God purposed you. What God planned for you. We look at it like it's a, it's a curse. Oh man, I'm not. I'm not okay. Oh God, you, God, you understand. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because without that, what's in you will never be revealed. See, listen. Now, people around you, circumstances that you got to have in order for people to really know you for real. We can't be known apart from a death. That's why Jesus said in John 12, 24, except the corner of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. What's inside of him? He, could not, he, he couldn't get out of him without going through what he went through. And there's no way to get back to his relationship in Papa because your suffering, your crisis, your hardship, what you go through, that's how you bond with Papa. That's how you bond. Well, listen, we don't bond from the human realm with him. We bond with the human realm with people. Right. But to bond with God is what we go through and still be true is how we bond with him. When we're going through what we're going through, notice what he says. I told you in Romans 8 real quick. Notice what he says in Romans 8 chapter. And that's why it's, it's, it's so crucial. I'm, 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 I was going to talk about how, how the, and, and we know all things work together. Listen, let, let's, can we just forget that for a minute? Let's just forget that for a moment. Go back to 16 verse for a moment. Romans 8 chapter. I want us to see something so we can, we can welcome our challenges. So we can learn how to take advantage of it. Because remember, we're not from here. Right. The Bible says you've been, we've been made to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ. And God said, according to Ephesians 1, 4, he said, I've chosen you in me before the foundation of the world. Listen, before God made a plan, we already made a decision concerning us. He had chosen us that we should be holy and without blame. Now think about it. God made that decision concerning us before you had a test. Right. Long before you got a trial. So he knows the outcome before the test comes. But if you and I are dreading it, and we're pushing it back, we're scared we ain't going to make it. We're not just thinking of just, it's the worst thing that could have ever happened. Is the fact that I had to go through something, uh, that, that I had to be the one to stand in a place that I didn't want to stand. My brothers and sisters, listen, God knows exactly who you are. And our pattern said to us, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 3, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author, the finisher, the completer. He's the initiator of our faith. But the Bible said, for the joy that was set. He saw what he went through as that process that brings him in. He saw his process like the caterpillar see the cocoon to be a butterfly. 
in order to be a butterfly if you don't come to the cocoon. And you need the cocoon because the cocoon gives you the energy to produce your, your wings. Without the pressure of what a caterpillar goes through coming out of that cocoon, you'll never get your wings. You'll never get your wings because you, it's what you go through that allows the same way with the, uh, the oyster. Without that irritation, that rubbing of what it goes through inside the shell, what, that, what, the, what, the, what the pearl does, that little, at first it's a little rock. But as it goes through the process on the inside, that's how it gets to be a pearl. It's the irritation. It would have goes through the process to get to be a pearl. You and I, when we go up there, we understood it. We know that it was really making us work our soul, really making us valuable. We would stop frowning, stop pushing back. We would really try to be all that God make us, made us to be. When we look at the 16th verse, don't he says in Romans 8. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. And notice what he says, the one? That we are the children of God. And notice he says, the spirit itself. It's not it. That should have been translated himself because the spirit mm -hmm. is not it. Mm -hmm. All right. Bear witness it. with our spirit that we are the children of God. Mm -hmm. He said, bear witness with our spirit that we who? We are the children of God. We are the children of God. All right, now go ahead. And if children, then heirs. If children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, which, I, 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 this is so rich, I'm tempted to stop at every spot. But I ain't going to do it. Go ahead. If so be that we suffer with him, that we now, may also. Now notice, notice, notice. Let me show you how we get. He was talking about qualifying you in your calling. Yes. I was going to go over to Romans, the bottom part. But so let me go. Let's break it down. Because I told you last week, we're going to go down in. We're going down on the inside so people can get an intricate look at. Because when we talk about understanding, that's what understanding is. Understanding is organization. Understanding is having a comprehension, an idea of all the components that are in the game. And when you understand something, you know all the components, you can look at all the parts. And when you can able to organize the parts, then we call that understanding. That's big picture. That's when you can see all the things that are involved. That's how you understand. You know, it's like organization. It's putting all the parts together in big picture. Remember we told you if the car was on the assembly line, if it's on the assembly line going through and you just got parts and all you could see was just the parts, and you try to figure out, man, what in the world is that? Until you come to the end of the assembly line and it's all put together, that's when you understand that's a what? That's a car. But if you can't see it assembled, that's why we have to fellowship. That's why as a church, as a body, we have to come together. Because many, many times we can't see what God requires because we're so divided. We're so separated out. And so many of us can't understand. We say, I don't understand the Bible. Yeah, you read your favorite passage every week. Every day you read your faith, you read the stuff you like out of the Bible. You read, you stay away from Job. You stay away from Ecclesiastes. You stay away from Revelation. But those are passages that'll get you clean inside. Those things will help purge. We ain't running those passages. I stay on scared of Revelation. I know you're scared. Why is that scared? Because that's something in you that's telling you you're gonna be cast out if you read. <laughs> But listen, if we start organizing these, putting these components together like we need to, we'll get an understanding and we'll stop fighting what we're destined for. And listen to what he says. He said, order, now back up just a little bit from that last part he just read. And if heirs, then joint heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. Now think about it. I, I can do all things through Christ. Now I'm declaring what I, that's the passage I like. Right. One of my favorite ones. Right? Yes. God supplies all my needs. Yes. Right? And now I ain't gonna get into that, but you go to read that text, you'll finally say what you think it says. Yes, but listen, you read those passages, and that's one of the problems. Is that we go get these passages and we pull them out of that setting. And we pull them out of this setting. And I mean, man, we out here all over the place. We lay hands on, on everything. We're speaking over this and declaring over that. And man, because somebody taught you how to do that. But God never gave you a living word. This is what he tells us. And notice what he says. If so be, that now he we says, suffer with you. If we do what? Now here's the issue. Who you are is not obvious to people. That's what childhood is. Childhood is you're not recognized yet as be, of who you actually look like. So I believe she got eyes like her mama. Everybody, everybody got eyes. They all got eyes. When you're a baby, you can't tell no traits, no qualities. You're a ba you're what? You're a baby. Baby means you're unformed, inexperienced. You're not mature. That things you're not ripened. 
You're not ready to be plucked. You can't distinguish or detail just yet. It hasn't grown in the form and frame. Its characteristics, its traits, it doesn't reflect those yet. In order to determine if someone really is like somebody, you gotta be able to see fruit, characteristics, you need traits. It takes time to develop that. You ain't born on the day you were born, and you know, oh my God, she looked just like her mama. No, she don't. All the babies look like How are you hearing me? Listen, babies have to be developed. This is what he's trying to tell us. Notice what he says, back up, back up that verse. He says that we're heirs of God, and we're joint heirs with Christ. And he tells you how this can be told. That's why most people look at church people, look at believers, and try to, many times they say, man, that's, she saved. I ain't know she, she saved. She born again. Because what they're saying is they're looking for traits. They're looking for qualities of where they came from. And it takes time to develop those. It takes a time of bonding. It takes time, not only the fact of born again, if we get born again, that's you saying yes to God. God came on the inside. Now, God, you said yes, and God came in. And God came in, and by virtue of putting the spirit in your life, he owned up to owning you right. by bringing you into the kingdom. Right. Now you got to come to a place the way you own him. you got to be able to say yes in your crisis, in your hardships, in your challenges, in your difficulties. you got to be able to affirm that. And it can't be done apart from crisis, hardships, and difficulties. Because remember, they come unto man. What makes you stand out among common men is the way you handle what you go through and your challenges. Now, here's, here's another passage, and I'm giving it up. Notice what he says. Which one? 17? Yeah. And the Pharisees? Uh, the next one. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. Now, here's what I want you to make a note. He said, this is what you and I got to go spend some time with. I reckon that the sufferings of this time is not worthy to be compared. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now see, here's what we want to understand. The enemy fight us on this place because of the fact that he does not want what's in us to come out or want us what's in us to be revealed. Because there's a glory that, get, that gets to be revealed when we be true to God in our tests, in our crisis, in our hardships. When we're going through difficult places, if we would say to what we're going through, let me tell you something. You ain't worried, huh? You don't even belong in the same arena with God. I would dare allow you to make me curse him, defame him, make him look little, make him look small, make him not look like he and I not related because I'm in the planet to reveal to people who he is, what he looks like. And when I'm in my test, in my trial, that's the place where I can say to my trials and my tests, man, you ain't even worthy. You don't even belong in the same stratosphere, the same hemisphere with God. Because you're not worthy. My test is not worthy to even be compared to what God's going to be revealing in me. And if we learn how to develop and focus at that place, when we talk about these times we're in right now, at perilous times, that time when the enemy trying to push, push us down, make us weaken us, yes. push us down to where we're, not, we're weakened. No, no, we're not, we re reject that because what you do against us does not even compare. It doesn't even fit in the same arena of what God's doing in us. I'm supposed to come behind that now. <laughs> you man. Is that what I'm supposed you to do are now? Man, I figured it uh, out. I thought you was going to close it out, man. You, you were doing a good job. I, missed, I, missed, I missed my girl. You said, okay. we'll get him in a minute. <laughs> Did run well. Yes. Now, let me just say that because you mentioned that there with the 18th verse that we, you, we read and you mentioned when Paul says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Yes. Um, around that, when he says, for I reckon the reckon there, it's an accounting term. Yes. It means to take inventory. It means to look at your, your debts, and it means to look at uh, yes. your assets. It's to compare the two. Yes. Paul says they're not even worthy to be compared. Yes. I won't even line them up. And in, in, in an accounting term, what you do as an accountant, you line the debts up in one column, yes. and you line the assets up in another column. Yes. And you add the debts up, and you add the assets up, and now you know what you left with. There you go. In that, Paul says, I won't even do that. Suffering won't even make me do that. Suffering won't make me look at what I'm going through. To compare it to what God's going to do for me. Yes. What God is going to do for me is so much greater that I won't even factor in the suffering. Yes. I don't count my suffering. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Only thing I count is what James told me to count. Yes. 
I count it all joy every time I am suffering. I don't count how many times I've suffered. I count it joy when I'm having to suffer. That's a missing component. And if we don't get that and we don't understand that, even as you were speaking earlier about the fact what God has richly deposited in us and given us, that he's equipped us and prepared us for whatever we were encounter and deal with. And you were mentioning about Paul in the 12th chapter of the 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Paul says something, and you mentioned it, and I want to go back just a little bit. Paul says, he says, because of the revelation that was given to me, what I saw, what I heard, I can't even talk about it. That's right. He said there was something else given to me. Yes. It was called a messenger seed. I want to ask who gave it that to him. There you go. Yes. I let him salah there for a moment. <laughs> he said there was a, I was given revelation. Yes. And then he says, but because of the abundance of revelation, yes. lest I be exalted. Yes. To keep me from being exalted over what I saw, what I heard, what I know. There was something else given to me. Well, can we say the devil gave it to him? I think not. They got a salad here, man. Because the devil didn't know what he had. The enemy couldn't attack him at that level because he didn't know what he possessed. But because of what he possessed so that he wouldn't be exalted based on what he had, the test, his level of testing was based on what God had given him. I wanted to make that statement. Based on what God had richly deposited and given him, that was the level of his test. That was the level of his trial. That was the level of his tribulation. That was the level of his trouble. In that, he said, the message of Satan was given to buffet me. What? Lest I should keep me from being exalted. He said, but concerning this, because I was, the effect that this thing was having upon me, he said, I saw the Lord three times that it might, what? Depart. I want to get rid of it. Just like we want to get rid of stuff. Stuff we don't like, stuff we don't care for, stuff that's causing issues and problems for, we want to get rid of it. Yes. He said, but concerning this, I couldn't get rid of it. All the Lord, as I asked the Lord, he said, all he said to me was his grace is sufficient for me. Yes. So, because, why, well, why was this process necessary? Now we can see why Paul, in the revelation and the insight and this message of Satan, that was given to Buffett, the word Buffett is to beat, that was literally beating him, that so that to keep him humble, but there was a greater lesson in this that he just wouldn't be exalted. That's right. The greater lesson so that he could discover something about God yes. that he could never discover at the place where he was. That's right. Think about the place where he was. I got revelation, knowledge, and insight and understand stuff I can't even talk about. Right. Man, that's a place to be at. But there's still something that he don't know. Yes. He don't know altogether the sufficiency of the grace of God. Yes. That God's grace is so sufficient that it can help me to live with my problems and my trouble. And they don't ever have to go away no more. Yes, glory. That's what God's trying to cause us to discover. Yes. Yes. That's true victory. Yes. Paul, who wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament, had not made the discovery. Well, how did he get this great revelation of the grace of God? Through the trouble he had to experience. Because God teaches us. I heard you say, that's when God's holding glass. And that's when we really need to be paying attention. When we're experiencing the trouble and the difficult. One more, if I can do this. I know we're close. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I digress. I digress. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I wouldn't do it. All right. That's probably they have live people see because they'll 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 make you go places. They'll make you go places. Uh, in in Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong place. Second Corinthians, the first chapter, right quick. You can get that, and I'll get it. Uh, the first chapter of Second Corinthians, and I'm just gonna break in there. The Apostle Paul writing. Now, this really is one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's one of my favorite. Oh, it wasn't my favorite at first. I didn't like it at first. I didn't even like it. It's my favorite. The Apostle Paul writing in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 8. He said, For we were not, for we were not brethren, have you ignorant? The word ignorant is the opposite of knowing. It's not having information, it's not knowing. 
He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to not know. I want you to have information. What information I want you to have? Concerning the trouble which came to us in Asia. He want the people to know about the trouble that he experienced. Now, now, I know King James uses this word trouble there, and it is trouble, but this, this word uh, in, in its rendering is not just, because sometimes we think of trouble as being a light thing, but this word means pressure. It means afflicted. It means anguish. It means being burdened with persecution. I'm not just experiencing persecution. I'm burdened down. In other words, I'm overcome with per persecution that they are, they're, they're so great that the persecution I've experienced is way, way, weighty upon me. It's weighty upon me. It's a tremendous thing. I'm burdened with it. In other words, I'm troubled by the trouble itself. The trouble is troubling me. All right? The trouble's troubling me. All right? So God has to teach you how not to let your trouble trouble you. All right, I throw that in there. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the struggle, this anger, which came to us in Asia, in that we were what? We were pressed out of measure, yes. above strength. He says we were pressed out of measure for the, the ability, because when you talk about this word measure here, you, you're talking about from the standpoint of, of, of pressed beyond where I am, or my, my capability or where I'm positioned, or where I, I'm pressed beyond that. In other words, where I am right now, the trouble I'm experiencing is taking me beyond my stand, or then he says above strength, which strength has to do with, we, means one translation says, I don't remember, said we were exhausted of all our strength. In other words, we didn't have any strength left. We didn't know how to deal with this trouble. It was that severe, that great. We didn't know what to do with it. We were pushed to that level of degree. He says, above strength, in so much that we despaired. In other words, despair has to do with hopelessness. 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 In other words, and not only that, but from this standpoint, we were utterly at a loss. We were... We didn't know what we were going to do. The trouble was so great, so severe. I didn't know what we was going to do. Then he goes on and he says, he says, but we had the sentence of a death. The word sentence has to do with a judgment. It's a judgment. Okay. In other words, what Paul is saying here, he says the judgment, our own judgment, because he says we had the sentence of death, what, in ourselves, all right, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in the God that's ready would raise the dead. Let me say this. Go back. He said, so, but we had the sentence of death. It's a judgment or it's a decision. And so what Paul was saying, when we looked at where we were, and that we were exhausted of all of our strength, of all of our ability, this thing has pushed us further beyond than what we have the ability to stand and to deal with. He says, when I ask myself whether I can come out of this thing safe or not, I concluded, my judgment was, I must die. He concluded because the trouble was that severe yes. that he recognized that he could not come out that, he, hey, boys, we ain't going to make it this time. We ain't going to be able to make it. That was their determination about themselves. He says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Why? Why? So that we would what? Not trust in ourselves. This whole process was bringing them to a place of not trusting in themselves. It was designed to exhaust them on their strength. Why? So that they wouldn't trust in themselves on any level, any way, any form, any capacity that God would exhaust them of any thought, any idea, any, any level of your thought or your thinking that you may think, I can get me out of this because I got me out in time bad. God used this experience right. to bring him to this place yes. of exhausting him and those that was with that when they looked at him, they said, man, we dead. We must die. Yes. So that why? We could come to the place of not trusted in ourselves, but in what? In but God. in the God. Yes. That's the process. Yes. How do we get there? Through that process. Yes. And if we avoid the process, we never come to understand how to fully and completely and wholeheartedly with everything trusting God. Yes. Mm -hmm. God good? Yeah, he Glory. Is. He is. Well listen. You know you, you know how I go, right? With that one big one. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna let it yeah, go. I understand. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm you know I'm tempted, but I ain't gonna do it. I understand. It. Listen, we thank God for 
tonight. I don't know what happened with, with Apostle. I don't know why you back there or something. Oh, I guess um, both lines on. Um, something's happening with Barry. It's dropped a little bit. And uh, I'm sure my voice has dropped with it. So uh, elevate me just a little bit. Listen, we're grateful. We're thankful tonight. Appreciate all of you uh, that have joined in, chimed in with us. But here's what we're going to do. Right here in this place. And y'all know. And one reason, even as you hear as passionate as, as Pastor Odom is sharing. And what is happening is that God is conveying his heart. There are people that are out here that are listening. We're in a time that we're really not aware of. And the Lord is doing everything in his power, beating the drum. I mean, he's knocking at the door. You know, Revelation 3 says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. But because he, he's really trying to get people that are, that are not passionate, that are not driven, that are not up close, folks that are straggling. You remember when God, he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt? And the Bible said that the Amalekites came after them. You know the ones that he attacked? The folks that were straggling? Yes. The folks was, that was distant? Still trying to make up their mind about whether we're out or not, whether we're going to go, we're going to move forward. You remember all those people that died in the wilderness? Remember all those people that died? Just think about it. Where we are right now, and what we are in our process, where we are in time, and where we are in, in the challenges of our time, there are people that are still following the Lord are far off. You're distant. You're not passionate. You're not driven. And you're not motivated by what God is purposing. And I'm telling you, he said all day long, as a mother here with her chicks, he said, I stretch my hands out. Yes. There are people that the Lord, are re he's reaching to you. There are preachers that are on this line. And I know that you're, you're suffering gravely in your, by, your, by your standards. What you're used to, what you're accustomed to experiencing, and you're at a tremendously low place. But the Lord's saying, saying to you, it's him. And he's saying it because there's something after, yes. that he's after yes. in you. There's yes. a place that he wants you to concede. Yes. That he doesn't want you to trust. As a man of God, I just got through so eloquently uh, laying out so meticulously sharing uh, from the 2 Corinthians 4 chapter about what Paul had to come to discover in that difficult place. I mean, where he was despairing even of his life. But he had to come to realize the true essence of God. Do you know what? Sometimes what is valuable to us, what's important to us, what's significant to us, is not necessarily significant to God That's right. at the time that it is to us. And yet sometimes God is willing to lose a ministry, to lose a ministry to save a man. Sometimes God will let your ministry go, let it go down, fall down. Yes. And you hear you are fretting over what you're losing, what you don't have, what you ain't got. But God said, you know, well, that's what that's what it's worth to me. It's worth you losing a ministry to save the man. And sometimes God will take pet peeves, take out toys, because he'll offend your mind so he can reveal your heart. Because until you get down to the heart, you can't find the core of your existence. And you won't ever find your relationship with God until you can really face yourself. And so I want to say to you that God's knocking at the door right now. And now those of you that are listening tonight, I know you're out there and he's talking to you at this time and at this place. And many of you as the man of God was sharing, God is knocking at the door. And you know what I'm saying to you because of where we are in time. And God does not want you to leave out of here not fulfilling why he brought you to the planet. He's brought you for some, for here for, to the planet for something specific. See, Esther almost missed her time. Yes. Fretting what the king had the power to do. My brother and sister, don't never let what other folk got the power to do against you. Minimize what God's trying to do in you. Yes. There's nothing you'll ever encounter in life that's worth you minimizing what God wants to do in you. I learned something a long time ago, and this is what God told me. He said, let me tell you something. You can never have a problem outside of me and you. Any problems you will ever have in life is going to be between me and you. Because God did never give the enemy that kind of place in our relationship. And I'm talking about when we're covenant people. Oh, now, those of you that are listening to me within the sound of my voice, that's something God has purposed for you in this season. That's one reason that you're here. And like I said, we're not the best out here. We're not the best at doing what we're doing. Matter of fact, we're neophytes. We're, we're green as grass. We're trying to figure it out as we go. Sometimes y'all turn on y'all. Y'all see the camera on the floor. Sometimes y'all see all the stuff here and there about. And But yet... You still stay, you still hang in there to listen. Because you know that as a knock on the door. You know there's something God's after. You know it's about our, not about our excellence. You know, we all wish that we could do it perfectly. We had it just right. We wish we, we could we really impress you and who and are you with the way we do this. But that's not what it's about for you. Because many of you listen to me, you got that already. Some of you got excellence. Some of you do it well. But you're not in church right now. 
And right now you do it well because God's after you using the upsetting of where you are. He's using the disorder to reveal to you his order. Do you know you can't know order by having order? But you can't have everything here. All your, all your eyes are dotted, all your T's are crossed. And do you know you're looking for God's order in your perfection? Baby, you will never find it. That's why Paul, the man of God, said that when he says, I know a man of up 14 years ago, all the visions and dreams and all the stuff that he had and possessed, and yet God had to upset the apple cart so he could learn. You're going to know Paul was a perfectionist. Man, he was going to have nothing out of place. He's not going to let all that stuff that he went through. You think he ordered that? He didn't order that. God ordered that so he could reveal himself to him. And some of you, you out there, you're trying to figure out the mess that you're in. And you're saying, man, I didn't sow this and I didn't order this. I don't understand. And you're meticulous. You, you have your stuff lined up. Nobody beat you doing that. But God uses disorder to reveal order. I mean, it takes disorder to bring about order. That's why Jesus came down through 42 generations. He came down through 42 generations of mess. If you look at folk that was in his lineage, Rahab was in there. You go through the folk that was in there, it was a mess, but he came down through it in order to give God what he was after. And that's what it's going to take in this hour. So listen, we want to pray for those of you that are on this line because that folk right here, that God's been talking to you, knocking on your door, and you've not answered. But let my brother say, you do not want to waste any more time. And so I'm going to ask, and I ask everyone that's in this room, we're going to agree with you right now. And those of you that have never asked the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ to come into your life, you never invite him in, you got an opportunity right now. And those of you that the Lord's speaking to, whether you're a preacher, you're a minister, I don't know whether you're a bishop, it doesn't matter. It's not about your title, man. It's never, ever better. Listen, because there are things that you can do for God, even if folks ne never knew who you were. Never let a title or a handle on your life restrict you from what God's called you to do. Jesus did not care. He wouldn't let them make him king. So we're going to pray right now. I want you to repeat after me. Those of you that have never asked the Lord to come into your life, I want you to repeat after me. And we're going to repeat together and give you another opportunity because you can know the Lord Jesus and you can be where you need to be tonight. Mm -hmm. And now those of you, I want you to hold on because we're going to pray for you guys as well. Can y'all repeat after me? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent. I repent. Me a sinner. Me a sinner. I made a mess of my life. I made a mess of Lord, my life. Lord, I actually thought I could do it. Lord, I actually I thought I could fix it. I thought I could work this thing out. I thought I could work this thing out. But I realize. And I realize. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I know what your word says. And I know what your word says. In Romans 10. Romans 10. You said if I confess with my mouth. You said if I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. And if I could believe in my heart. That if I could believe in my heart. That he died for my sins. That he died for my sins. And that God raised him from the dead. And that God raised him from the dead. For my justification. For my justification. You, said I could be saved. you said I could be saved. I'm asking you tonight. I'm asking you tonight. Because I renounce Satan. Because I renounce Satan. All of his cohorts. All of his cohorts. All, all of his deeds. All of his deeds. My will. My will. I want to do the will of the Father. I want to do the will of the Father. I want you living in my life. I want the fruit of the Spirit abiding in me. I want the fruit of the Spirit. I want the gifts of the Spirit abiding in me. The gifts of the Spirit abiding in me. Lord, I want you tonight. Lord, I want you tonight. And I'm asking. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Feel me. Feel me. To overflowing. To overflowing. I ask you tonight. I ask you tonight. In the name of your son. In the name of your son. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. So if you prayed that prayer, you believe God with me, I believe it with you. And I'm praying right now that a miracle is going to take place in your heart and in your life. I believe you'll never be the same. I believe God's going to do some things that you only dreamed about. I believe you're going to find out the reason and purpose that you're in the planet. I believe destiny is going to introduce itself to you. I believe you're going to discover what God has purpose for you. And I believe you're going to discover the time that God has given you to be in the planet. Yes. I think things in life are going to take a whole new perspective. I believe that. And I believe with yes. all these in the room and those that are listening to me, by way of Facebook, by way of social media, believe the same thing. Now listen, to those that are out there, and those of you that you know, you know you, you, you've escaped, you know you've dodged, you know you tried to push off, you tried to push away, you tried to say this don't make sense, I don't understand, all the complaining, all the murmurs you've done, all you've done was prolong the mandate, prolong the call. All you did was prolong the suffering. Because God's not gonna compromise that. Jesus, think about it, if, if he wouldn't answer Jesus' prayer over that, if he wouldn't change, of course, because of what Jesus was, was asking for, if Jesus had to reconsider and said, Lord, listen, if this cup is not going to pass, unless I drink yes. it, yes. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Jesus in his humanity. He was revealing what it's like to be there, that he understands that place. He gets it. We all wrestle. He said, we wrestle not. We all struggle. We all are challenged. But the issue, the final analysis is, we're going to give God his way. We're going to give him what he requires. We're going to give him what he wants. And so that those of you that have been fighting it, you've been trying to forge ahead, you've been trying to do ministry without him, and you'll come to a place right now where God said, listen, you need to surrender. You need to submit. You need to humble yourself. See, humility is one thing. Submission is another. See, listen, humility is, that's external. To obey God, obedience, that's, that's external. You obey God externally. You've got to do something physically to do it. But submission is on the inside. You've got to down on the, in that inward conversation where you can kind of cuss people out, say things that people don't know you're saying. See, in that place, in that some conversation, where it, but underneath is where you submit. That's where you surrender. That's where you give God what he requires. And so I want to say to you tonight, because God's doing something special. And I believe that you're going to start to experience the turnaround. I agree with the people of God. We're praying together. We're praying over you right now. All of you that have lost your way. Those of you that know the Lord requires more than what we're giving. Many of you have not answered the call. We've not surrendered. We've not submitted. I want to agree with you. Believe tonight that God's going to do that for you. He's going to cancel the assignment of the wicked one. That vile one. That has manipulated you. Tried to hide purpose. Tried to block destiny. Will not allow you to see what God really was after. I believe you're going to give God what he requires. And I'm agreeing with you. Jesus. Believe with you. And I'm asking where fellowship has been broken. You, where you have you deviated from the plan of God. I'm asking God to restore. I'm agreeing with my brothers and my sisters. These men and women of God that have gathered. And we're asking that heaven will begin to give you another opportunity. Give you another stage and another platform to get it right. There's never a right way to do the wrong thing. And we need to always understand. I said it said again. There's never a right way to do the wrong thing. And so I want to urge you to line it up to get right with God because of what he's purpose for your life. And so Father, we release that. I'm asking where fellowship was broken. I'm asking where they've transgressed. And if there's any iniquity, if there's any hidden sins unconfessed, I'm asking you to cleanse any of us. We, we, we humble ourselves before you. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us. And we ask you to restore us back to that place. We ask you to faith in the awesome, in the matchless name of Yeshua, Lord Jesus, we pray. Thank you. And if hearts them. Amen. Amen. Listen, now those of you that are on the line right now, the Lord is going to perform miracles for. Tonight, earlier tonight, I remember I was talking to, to Lady Q earlier. We were talking, and she was telling me about uh, this dove that you saw. You said the dove was the size of a man? Uh, somebody get her a microphone real quick. Listen, she was telling me about a dove that was the size of a man that she saw come into Come into the, came into this place. And so this is what he was pastors for just for a moment. I want to share this because I want to say this to you. I want you to see what the Lord is purposing. And and just I want to confirm, I want to share the word, and I'm gonna come back and, and let the Lord confirm his word. So go, go ahead, would you? Uh, it was Sunday night around 8:59. I saw this humongous uh dove. It was pure white, and it like it took flight and it came and landed inside this building. And so the first thing I thought about, I thought about how the dove came on, you know, on Jesus after he got baptized. And then I thought about when Noah released the dove to go to see, you know. And so then I finally just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what, what's going on? What's that? And he said, I'm coming into Tuesday. He said, I'm coming in Tuesday. That's what he said. He says, I'm coming in Tuesday. And I said, so you're coming in what are you coming to do? Are you coming to perform miracles? And so, here we are today uh, in this place. And I know I need a miracle physically because even just sitting here, my ankle, if you, I don't know if you can see it, but just begin to swell. And even on the, on the way coming here, I just, just begin to swell. But the Lord was letting me know on a Sunday that he was coming into this place to do miracles. And listen, the reason I have to share this is for this reason. Tonight earlier, Sister Shirley Act uh, was wanting prayer because of the some challenges that she's been experiencing with uh, with the living quarters. And so as she came and, 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 and Elder Brynn came, and so she, she wants prayer. And so she got the oil. We're getting ready to pray, pray for her, for her situation. But right in the midst of it, we started praying for her. And I had to leave her and come over here and sit down because the spirit of God the Lord began to speak he said the host of heaven 
is here. And at that particular point, man, the spirit of God was so heavy that I could tell what I was feeling. They were feeling it too. I knew, and so I didn't even bother to pray no more for her because I knew God had come in and wasn't nothing for me to do. It said, get somewhere and sit down. And I did. I came over here and sat down. And, and, and at that, I began to, the spirit of God was so strong that we came in on the front end, front end of this thing. And so with that, I went back to thinking about the word that was shared about how God said he was coming in. And I'm telling you, he came in just like that before, prior to you guys getting here. And so in that, the spirit of God is here in that way. And I'm talking to people that are listening right now. And the Lord will want you where you're standing in faith and you believe in God. I'm believing with you tonight that there are people going to be touched tonight. Oh, my God, I feel it now. Somebody just give a little praise over just for a moment. And normally we don't get a chance to do this. But tonight, those of you that are on, on the line and those of you that are believing God, and believing God for the turnaround, and believing God for the miraculous, and believing God for healing, and believing God for silence, I want to get someone to get the all. And I'm going to ask you, you're going to go, well, you're just release all in her hand. Release all in her hand right there. And we're going to release the anointing because the power of God is being released right now. And there are people that are on this line that God's going to touch. I agree with the man of God. We're agreeing with the people that are in this room. I feel something here. If somebody give the Lord a praise offering just for a moment, would you do that? As we're releasing heaven's power, releasing heaven's authority, God's touching people right now because he promised you that he would. He told you that he would do it. Mark 16 said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name shall you cast out devils. He said, if you drink in a deadly thing, it will not harm you. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so we we'll believe in the night that the folk that are listening right here, as you're releasing your faith and you're agreeing with us now and you're joining faith, I'm believing that God's touching you now. God's canceling infirmity. He's canceling sickness. He's canceling disease. He's He's crushing the head of demonic forces. I'm talking about demons of infirmity. He's canceling. He's cutting off. He's destroying his power. He's breaking the back of that beast. He's commanding him. Leave you now. In the name of Yeshua. We're commanding heaven's power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We're releasing heaven's power. Heaven's authority. Tonight we're going to mark the night of your change, your shift, your turnaround. God's doing all. God, I'm blessing me here. Somebody got to give God a praise. Somebody got to bless heaven right here. I'm God for giving the praise, blessing his name, exalting his majesty, lifting him up, collecting among me that are gathered, and I'm believing heaven's power. And right now, Eric, I need you to stand just for a moment. Man, they're going to go back there and just begin to know it. Eric is going to stand. My God, I feel something here. Somebody got to give the Lord a praise on him. Somebody got to bless him here. I'm releasing heaven's power. I'm releasing God's anointing. God's touching you tonight. Tonight's marking a change, a shift, and a turnaround in this place. God's going to do something so profound. I'm telling you, I feel it right now. I feel that's been an aggravating spirit. Has the spirit been agitating and aggravating your health? But God's going to break in the back of that spirit. I'm canceling that assignment. I'm cutting it off. I'm destroying its influence. Losing its power. God said there's a call that's going for Your life is getting ready to shift and to change. Oh, I feel something here. Somebody need to give Lord a shout right here. Somebody need to bless heaven right here. I'm talking about God's power. God, oh my God, somebody bless him. I said, God, God's calling you tonight. You're getting ready to step into what God brought you into the planet. I said, your life is getting ready to take a shift. God, for the brain, he's going to bring you into the region. He brought you to the planet. I'm telling you right now, that when I'm telling you, when you lie down tonight, the spirit of the living God's going to rest upon you. God's going to move over you now. And God letting you know that when he brought you to the planet for he said it's time for you to walk in. It's time for you to fulfill his purpose. It's time for you to fulfill his plan. God's doing something right here. I feel something here. Somebody give a little shout right here. And the door you don't listen right here. God, I'm coming to that phone that this man right now. The spirit of the living God is moving on you in this place. God's yeah. touching you right now. There's a woman right here. You've been having problems you, with you even with you with your husband. But God tell me to tell you. He said, don't you stress. Don't you worry about it. God said, the turnaround's coming. God said, I'm going to begin to move on his heart, move on his mind, and things are going to shift. And God said, don't you worry about being taken care of because he tell me to tell you. He got you up in here. And so we're blessing heaven right now. We're releasing God's power, God's anointing, God's grace. And God and I'm doing something new, something awesome, something precious, and something powerful. As I greet the man of God, we're with the people of God. Oh my God, I bless him here. Somebody give a Lord a shout one more time. Yes. Glory. Yes. Lord have mercy. I feel the change. 
I feel the shift. Right there, Lady G, I need you to stand up right here because the enemy is working something. By the Spirit of the God, through the thought of your work, but commanded heaven's power, heaven's authority. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're agreeing right now. Somebody got, got to get the oil. I want you to begin to release the anointing right now. Matter of fact, we're going to give, we're going to agree, Pastor Glenn, while she's standing back there, we're going to release an anointing. That's, that's, that's an undermining. That's the enemy trying to steal passion. The enemy is trying to steal your hunger. There's something that's going on that's trying to undermine what God has purpose. But God says, be detained tonight, he's releasing an anointing over you. And God said, I'm going to break the spirit. He said, that's a spirit that's working. I mean, it's an aggravating, agitating, it's, a, it's an oppressive spirit. But God said, I'm, oh, there you go. There you go. Somebody said, thank you. Somebody bless heaven right here. God says, right now, God said, I'm giving you this baptism that's coming. God said, there's a baptism in the spirit of what God's purpose and what God's plan. And God said, this tonight is going to mark a brand new day. And God said, the thing that have been warming and fighting you, God said, I'm calling you to a higher place. And God said, you're going to have to begin to focus. He said, you're going to have to focus like you ain't never focused before because you're in a precious time. And God said, you're in a precious time and a precious day. And now like God said, I'm going to send my angel. He said, the angel of the Lord is coming to assist you because there's some things that have made a, that made a target out of your family. But God said, I'm going to bring the power that will salt. God said, okay, oh my God, some other blessing here. So I get a little shout right here. We bless him. We thank him. In the name of Jesus. We're blessing heaven. Go ahead and bless him right here. Don't need to bless him. God's breaking. I'm telling you, there's a spirit that's being broken off. Oh, God has been trying to influence, has been trying to stagger, trying to undermine. But oh my God, I'm pleased to come here. Somebody, you want to shout because he's worthy. We bless him and he will give him God glory. We're giving him praise. We're reverencing his presence. We're honoring his Holy Spirit. We're magnifying the name of this place. He is, oh my God, I bless him here. He's worthy. He is worthy. There you go. There you go. As you surrender, as you yield. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you. Bless heaven right here. Let me ask you, does that for the word from the Lord in it? At this place, anybody? Thank you, Father. Listen. Y'all just good. It's okay. Y'all bless him. Y'all bless him. Y'all help him. Y'all magnify Bless his name. Oh my God. I feel it. I feel it. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel, oh, there go, there go, there go. Somebody being liberated, there go. That's an anointing of liberty, oh, there go. Somebody being liberated right now. That's an anointing right now. Oh, God, because you've been having difficulties, being able to do the things you need to do, you've been having a problem in your walking and your advancing, but I feel the anointing. God releasing an anointing on your feet, and God's coming in that lame spirit has been at work, has been at war against you. God's I'm canceling that spirit. I'm cutting it off. I'm destroying its power. I'm, oh my God, I feel it here. We break the back of that lame spirit. Devil, loose God's people. Loose all those that have problems in their feet, in their legs, in their hips. We're commanding God's power. But hey, my God, we're blessing here. Somebody got to give a lot of praise off it. I said, somebody, God got to bless heaven right here. I feel the anointing for folks that have been challenged in their walk, in their feet. I, oh my God, I bless it right here. We're blessing heaven. There's an anointing being released. God's canceling that assignment and cutting off that spirit, destroying its operation and its assignment against heaven's purpose, against your life. I'm agreeing now, believing now, we're agreeing now. We, we bless him. Yes. Yes. My God, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, that some of you have been having a hard time following through with God's purpose, and you've been having some challenges in your walk. Oh, my God. But I'm telling you, God is here tonight. God's touching you in that area. I mean, to, to address that issue, to address that place, and God's going to begin to strengthen you. I feel it. Somebody who's been hindered, been hindered restricted, can't even be trying to impede you, but you're getting ready to walk through. You're getting ready to be liberated. You're going to be able to walk in the things that you're not been able to walk in the time going past. God said, the night is the night of liberation. It's a night of freedom. Oh, my God. That goes. Somebody one more time. Somebody bless heaven here. Yes, we bless him. Yes. Save us. Hey, my God, I bless him.
seven. We're giving him praise. We're giving him glory. We're referencing his presence. And I'm believing God. We're praying over those. I'm believing for those that are fighting. God fighting Corona. We're praying over. We're praying over Samuel. We're praying. Father, right now, we're filled. Philip Simmons is brother with asking right his nephew with commanding Samuel we're asking heaven's power heaven to find a cover in the name of Lord Jesus and we decree that you're covered we're asking you to hands right about we're asking you to see what we're praying over Samuel we're believing in heaven's power God he's been diagnosed with coronavirus but we're taking a thought over that spirit we're catching that assignment and those that may be on this land right now that are battling that beast got no one that's fighting it I'm a great man of God we're great with the people of God we're great for the heavens and releasing heaven to find it we know what he said according to this word my God, Matthew 8, 17 says, Himself took my infirmities, bore our sickness, and with His stripes we were healed. I mean, James 5, 14 says, That in the sick among you, that I'm called the elders of the church, let it know that with all in the name of the Lord. And you said, The prayer of faith would save the sick. We're praying right now, we're believing right now that God's touching in the name of the Lord. Oh, I feel that. Mighty God. Somebody's really strong on that right side. I don't know who's battling on that right side, but it's really strong on the right side, yeah. on that right foot. I'm telling you right now that the power of the living God, I feel yeah. it. Oh, my God. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the power of God, the presence of God yeah. touching people. Oh, God, that are challenged whether or not you're lame, have a problem. I mean, even with your, your, even your spiritual walk as well as your natural yeah. walk. I believe God is touching both arenas, even in your obedience, where you can have uh, you're difficult to obey God. And whether even you fight that lame spirit, we're taking authority over it right now. We're catching that assignment in the name of Jesus. Yes. We're blessing heaven. We're giving God glory, giving him praise. Somebody bless heaven right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know he's worth I mean, no, this is the day the Lord has made. Listen, and we came to rejoice and be glad. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm back. I guess I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I looked up and realized we're still alive. But listen, I want to say to you guys that there, and I felt that I needed to pray and release an anointing for those of you that are online and those of you that have been hanging out. They are believing God and they're kind of waiting Thank you, Lord uh, with Jesus. us. Thank you, Father God. Uh, what I want to say, uh, I want to urge you. I, I do want to encourage you. And like I said, uh, all the information is on the screen. And I want to ask you guys just to follow through with what's on the screen. And I know God's going to bless you tremendously. Because I know God has given us a word about summonsing people's income, summonsing uh, the pay that caused them to be able to take care of things they need to take care of. You know, there's a lot of people, business are closed. I, I walked in the Stein Mart today and got in there and they got signs up all over the place. They're closing out, they're shutting down, they're going, going out of business. And so a lot of people have not been able to hang out. And for some of you that maybe you work for places like that, and maybe your, 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 your income, your job is stopped, your hours are short, but whatever the case may be, I'm summonsing tonight with you. Income, pay. I'm calling you employment. I'm commanding the income to come. I'm, I'm summonsing it. The man of God, the people of God, we're summonsing it. We're summonsing your employment. We're summonsing favor with your resume. Summonsing favor with your application. We're summonsing it. The money's in. The money that you need to be able to take care of your affairs. You may take care of your obligations. We're summonsing it. We summons the dime. We're summonsing the income. We're summonsing the pay. We're calling it in. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Tonight, we're commanding it. We're summonsing it tonight in the awesome, in the natural state. Oh, Lord Jesus, we believe with you. And we're great together. Listen, we thank God for you. Appreciate you guys. I know some of you probably pushed your past your bedtime. But listen, thank God for you hanging in there with us, believe with us. But listen, obey the things on the screen. And listen, if you can be a blessing tonight, I want to urge you. We really need you to do it. Would you do it? I really need you to do it. We got give a file on the screen. Cash app is on the screen. The address is on the screen. Our 602, our 600, to Tuscaloosa Avenue Southwest. That's 35211 is the address. You can bring it, bring it by, or you can mail it. We really appreciate it. Thank God for you. As you always you know, as we always say, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And you have got to be encouraged today.